Anki is a flashcard program that uses space repetition and active recall to help you remember things easily. But what exactly does that mean? What is space repetition and what is active recall, you may ask? Space repetition is a learning technique where you go over facts and concepts in increasingly spaced intervals to improve your long-term retention. You can picture this by plotting a graph of retention against time. Say below this line is when you begin to forget something. When you first learn a new concept or a new fact or an idea, you will slowly begin to forget it over time quite quickly. But if you review it at just the right time, it will take longer for you to forget it. And as you can see, the interval between reviews increases over time. But how should you review the material? The best way to review material is to use active recall. This means to only use your memory to remember things. This could be done by doing exam questions on a topic or going through questions on flashcards. Combining these two ideas of space repetition and active recall means that you will go over harder content and harder facts more frequently and easier facts and content less frequently. But how do you decide on how often you should go over the material? And this is where Anki comes in. Essentially, you make a bunch of flashcards on things you want to remember. And when you go through the flashcards, you decide how long before you want to see the flashcard again. And that depends on how easy it was for you to remember. If you couldn't remember it at all, you choose 10 minutes before you see it again. If it took some effort but you remembered it, you may choose a day. And if it was really easy to remember, you may choose four days. Say I chose one day and a day later I open up Anki and I see the flashcard again. If I forgot what the answer was, then I choose 10 minutes. If I still remembered it, then I'd increase the interval before I see the flashcard again to three days. Eventually, you will begin to go over harder content more frequently until that harder content becomes easier, and this is exactly what you want. Like with everything, Anki is going to have some pros and cons. The pros include, number one, your studying will be much more effective because you're going over the things you find hard more often. Number two, you don't have to plan which topics and which things to study on which day if you have flashcards for those things. You just open up Anki every day and go over the flashcards due that day. And number three, it's great for memorizing a bunch of things such as quotes, chemical reactions, or words in another language. Rather than cramming them last minute before an exam, you can just use Anki over a few months and you will be able to remember a much larger portion of it. However, the cons include, obviously you can't use this as a substitute for actually writing essays and actually doing exam questions. You still have to do those to practice your skills. Anki is for learning content, not for applying content. And you cannot use it to easily test your understanding of a concept and see how it fits into the wider picture. You'll see what I mean as we go along. I recommend you first install Anki on your computer, as it's the fastest way to make and import flashcards. You can do this by going on the website linked in the description and pressing download. So I'm using Windows and I have the 64-bit version, so I'm just going to press download here. So now that it's downloaded, I just open the file and go through the installer. And after that, I can just open up Anki. And here we go, it's installed. Now, if you want to go through your flashcards on the go, you can download it for your mobile. And if you have an Android phone, then you can download an app called Anki Droid. And if you have an iPhone or an iPad, you have two options. You can even buy the Anki mobile app on the store for around $25. Or you can go to your browser and go to ankiweb.net and use the online version instead. And now go to ankiweb.net and make an account. This will help you sync your flashcards between your mobile device and your computer. And finally, using Anki on your computer, you can go here and press sync and then log into your account here. And now each time you press sync, it will sync all your flashcards to the Anki website. And now the next thing to do is to create flashcard decks. To do this, you press create deck and then give your deck a name. So I'm going to write chemistry. I could create one for biology too. And let's say I want to make a deck inside this chemistry deck. You would just create a deck and call it chemistry. 
and double colon and then uh, say reactions and now there's a reactions deck inside this but don't make too many decks or sub decks because having too many can slow Anki down it's better to use tags to group flashcards together rather than having too many decks so I've made a couple more decks to add flashcards to these decks you press add and then over here you choose which deck you want to add it to so let's say biology and then this is where you write in the question for the front of the flashcard so i could write in what is is the power house of the cell and then uh, mitochondria and over here you can add uh, various things like bold make text at, uh, italic I'll cover how to make uh, chemical equations and mathematical equations on flashcards in another video. If it's already out, it should be linked right now somewhere. But let's just add this flashcard and let's say I want to make a, another flashcard uh, in the flags deck. The nice thing is you can add images as well. There's also a type of flashcard called a closed flashcard. And if you want to add it, then you go to type and press manage and then press add and you should see uh, add close over here but since i already have it then i just select this uh, and choose that as a flashcard type now in here this type of flashcard i could write uh, albert einstein uh, formulated uh, special relativity now if i wanted to do a missing word which I fill in, then I could select uh, this. And now you see these closed tags around it and then select that again. So C1 and C2 means they're going to be two different flashcards. And you'll see this in a second when I go over it. And if you want them to be on the same flashcard, then uh, you could say uh, mitochondria is a power house of the cell. Let's add that to the biology one. And I could just uh, choose close on this, close on this, but change this C2 into C1. And that means they're going to be on the same flashcard. So now if I go through these closed flashcards, then uh, you should see this part is missing. And when I press show answer, this comes up. And if I go to the biology one, uh, this is the old flashcard. See this one, they both appear on the same flashcard. Whereas for the physics, we have two. We have one for Albert Einstein, and then we have another for special relativity. Because C1 and C2 we used here. C1 and C1 we used in the biology card. There's also another type of flashcard called a reverse flashcard. So you go to type, and then you do and reversed card. Press choose. And this basically means it's going to make two flashcards for this one with the front and back as you enter it and another with the flipped so i could write uh, spain and then copy this flag uh, into anki and press add now when i go through this flashcard in the flags you're going to see two flashcards this is one i made before and then it says spain and the flags over here and then there's another one and it shows a flag and then when i press show answer it shows spain so it's two flashcards from uh, one card. So the final type of flashcard is a type in answer. So if I go to type and then choose basic type in answer and press choose, uh, on the front I could write what is the uh, capital of England. And then on the back uh, that would be London. And then I'd press add. And now when I go through this flashcard, it's going to ask me to type an answer. So if I pressed London, uh, London, but misspelled it, then it'd show me uh, like the what I typed in versus the actual answer. And if I said, yeah, this is fine. I knew how to spell it anyway. That was just a mistake. Then I could um, say it's good or easy. And I could even go back and sync it to the Anki website. So now if I go to the Anki website, refresh the page, you can see all my cards here. So let's say I was on my phone um, because I didn't decide to buy the app. 
uh, on iOS, then I could just go on the website and press study now and then go through the cards here. Um, so the good thing about this is over time, all the cards which you find harder to remember, they will come up more frequently and the cards you find easier to remember will come up less frequently. And the idea is that spacing this out and forcing yourself to actively recall this information will make it stick over time. Also, you can use the browse feature to see all the flashcards you have made. And these are the various types of flashcards which I've made. And let's say I go, I go to physics, I can see the two ones which I have for um, special relativity. And remember, these two are closed flashcards, so they're going to be two separate ones. So before I mentioned, you could add tags to flashcards. So how exactly are they useful? So it, let's say I was adding more flashcards to the flags deck, and I wanted to add one for South Africa. So I would load up a flag of South Africa and then just copy it and paste it into here. And in this tags section, uh, let's say I wanted to tag them by consonant and I would just write in Africa here, press add. Let's say I wanted to make one for Ghana as well. Uh, I would search Ghana flag and then just copy this into here. And that's the same Africa tag. And let's say I wanted to make one for Germany, uh, Germany flag, and just copy that into here. And for tags, I change it to Europe. And let's say I wanted to add another tag, I just press a space. And let's say I wanted to make a tag for striped flags. Um, I could do stripey flags. So stripey dash flags, because a space is counted as a separation between tags. Press add. So the advantage of this is that you can make custom study sessions. Let's say you have a test coming up on all the African flags, then you can filter out all the African flags from your flag stack and study them all. This is much better than having a lot of sub decks for various topics because you can add uh, multiple tags to one, uh, one card and then still be able to filter it out. So let's see this in action. If I go to the flags deck and then press custom study, uh, all these should be self-explanatory except for the last one. Study by card, state, or tag. If I press choose tags and then uh, require one or more of these tags, uh, if I wanted to say, uh, let's say I wanted to study African flags and stripey flags, then I would select Africa press control and press dry P as well, and then press OK. And now you see here, it's made me a custom study session, uh, which I could rename if I want. Um, if I go here and press study, then you can see the tags which I've labeled Africa have appeared. So South Africa flag, uh, Ghana flag, and now the stripey flags have also appeared. So now if I go back to Dex and I delete this custom study session, then all those cards which were in that deck haven't actually been deleted. They've just gone back to the flags deck. So if I go to the flags deck again, I could do another custom study session. And let's say I wanted to review every single card from this deck. Uh, let's say I had like 500 cards, um, or well, even if I had 400, it'd choose all of them if I wrote 500. And all cards in a random order. Choose, uh, choose tags, uh, I'll require none of the tags because I don't want, I want to study all the cards. And then it's made me a custom study session with all the cards inside. And this is useful if some of the cards aren't actually due in that day, um, because you can study all your cards at once quickly. I usually did this on the weekend before an exam and I easily went through a deck of about 400, 500 cards in a few hours. If you found this video useful, then please consider subscribing to my channel for more. I'm a first year student at Cambridge and I make various videos on studying and occasionally life as a student. It really helps me out if you'd leave a like and subscribe and if you have any ideas for more videos I can make, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.